I want to finish off by basically telling you something very practical. So um, with hidden Markov models, like with many probabilistic models, it's good to work in the log domain, okay? Because you're multiplying together things that are very, very small, we rather work with logs so that you don't end up with underflow problems, okay? But there's one extra bit of something that you need um, because you can't just take logs everywhere and hope that it would work out because you actually run into a small problem, okay? And I just want to make, and the way to deal with that is a trick called the log sum x trick, okay? So I just want to make this a little bit concrete. Just very quickly, if I take the log of a times b, then what's that? Log a plus log b, that's correct, okay? And that solves the problem because if these numbers are very small, then these are still manageable. They're much larger, okay? Now the problem that we are going to run into is that log a plus b what the fudge is that okay that's if if we're summing up things that are small we can't just immediately just do that in the log domain and our life is wonderful because there isn't like an easy rule for what the fudge that is okay and in the forward algorithm if you remember we were actually summing up a bunch of probabilities and that's where the problem comes in so very concretely in hidden markov models you might end up with an equation looking like this. Okay, so these are our alphas. Okay, you've got your emission distribution and you've got transition, probab um, transition probabilities and then your previous alphas and you're summing up a whole bunch of these probabilities. Now, we can take logs and you should do that. That's a, a good idea. So then what happens is you end up with log of P of XT given ZT is equal to J okay um, plus the log of that thing right so you end up with that now you've converted everything to logs okay so you're actually even here you're actually storing log of a and log of alpha so you can convert that back into um, like linear land by just taking the e to the power of the log a plus the log um, alphas okay and then this equation this equation is exactly the same but the problem that you have is that you've got this log of the sum of a bunch of stuff that each of those individual elements can be really small this one is fine okay there we've solved the log but here we've got the log of a sum of a bunch of stuff that's really um, really small really tiny so the log sum x trick allows you at least partially to solve this problem in the very general case what ends up happening with the log sum x trick is that you end up with something looking like this. So this doesn't happen just with hidden Markov models. It, it happens with other um, models as well, where you have the log of the sum of e to the power of, of something. And these terms, these e to the power of something terms in my little list that I'm summing up might be very small. Okay, and that's, that's our problem. Um, actually, when they're very small, you're likely to run into underflow. You can also have the opposite problem that they're very, very big, and then you will actually run into overflow, okay? If everything is discrete, that normally doesn't happen because you've got small probabilities that are all smaller than one, so you're way more likely to run into underflow. But when you're dealing with continuous stuff, then you can actually end up having very large terms here as well, and then you run into overflow. So life is misery uh, any way you look at it, basically, okay? So, but we've got a trick to deal with this, okay? And um, that allows us to calculate the sum and this trick is called the, the log sum x trick. So this is how it works. We've got the log of a bunch of numbers. e to the power b1 plus e to the power b2 plus, okay, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff plus e to the power b capital K. Now one of these terms one of these terms in this list is the largest uh, of, all the, of all the terms, okay? And we're going to save that one. And for this little example, I'm just going to pretend that the biggest one is B10, okay? So B, capital B is B10. This is my largest term in the list. So B10, this one is large. It's very large, okay? Now the strategy that I'm going to follow is the following. I'm going to write everything in terms of this largest term. 
log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as e to the power b1 minus b times e to the power b. Can you see that this and that is exactly the same? Okay, cool. I'm going to do that with the second term as well. b2 minus b to e to the power b. Can you see that this and this is exactly the same? Okay. Plus, dun, 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 plus e to the, okay, this is just e to the power b because that's the maximum one. So that and that is the same. Plus, dun, 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 plus e b k minus b times e capital B, close my brackets. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now I've done a little hack here because there's something common to all of these terms. The thing that's common is e to the power b times, okay, and then I still have e b1 minus b plus e b2 minus b plus dunk, 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 plus 1 plus dunk, 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 plus e b k minus b dunk, dunk. A log of a product between two things, and I can write that as log e of b plus the log of that monstrosity, like all of these things. Okay, cool. And the log e of b, that's just b, okay, plus the log of all of those other terms. Now, how did this make my life better? This made my life bigger because there's one term that's bigger than all of the other terms. And I've actually managed to get that term out of the log there. Okay. So if B was minus 20, which is super small, right? That's 0.0. Okay. If that is my largest term, which would be horrendous, but let's say that is my largest term in this list, then I've taken the minus 20 out and I've got it on the outside and I didn't have to deal with this problem of converting it, uh, taking e to the minus 20, which immediately leads to underflow. I didn't have to do that. I could just take out my minus 20 there immediately. Okay. And the other nice thing is I've actually made all the other terms bigger because what I've done is I've subtracted minus 20. If I take minus minus 20, what's that? That's plus 20, okay? So now I'm adding, adding numbers to all the very little BKs. So I'm actually yanking all of them up as well. These, th these things, unfortunately, you still need to convert them by taking e to the power of them. You can't get away from that. But you've made them bigger than they were before, okay? And so hopefully the log um, can still be calculated for, for that sum. Even if it can't, it's fine. You still have the biggest one and you're fine. The same thing happens with overflow. So if your b's are very, 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 very large, like 100, okay, e to the power 100, immediately you run into overflow. But now you've taken the 100 out, and what are you doing? Minus 100. So you're subtracting 100 from all of these terms. These things get more reasonable, we hope, so you can calculate the log of them. But even if you can't, you still have your 100 out, and the log sum x have made your life so much better than it was before.